Um, no, I had this this crazy, wacky, whack, wacko, whacked out, whack idea. I mean, it was whack. And I said, I I should I should get a simple way. You know, I mean, Bible stories, you know, are a thing. You know, it's it's like they're all over the map. I mean, there's so many of them. You know. And and I said, what about just having like a few key Bible stories to really give people a good survey of what happens in the Old Testament and the New Testament? I mean, Jesus' life itself is all over the map. You know that one blind man he healed? Oh, wait, no, it was two. Or was it three or six? Or was it, oh, wait, did he say get up or was it mud? Or what? Wait, didn't he heal some guy on the Sabbath? Oh, that was the blind. It's like, what? Wait, how many Marys and Marthas are there? You know, there, there's all these stories. And for most of us, it's just this collection. So I had this whacked out idea. I said, what if there's just a few of them? So I put them in order and I chose a number. I was going to do 51. I was going to do 50. But I was reading through Nehemiah. Nehemiah. And it. Nehemiah built the wall in 52 days. I said, well, there's 52 weeks in a year. So I just, I, so I, I own 52bible.com. It's 52 Bible stories. And if you go there, like after about 36 or just these empty numbers, at least they are today. Um, but I'm, I'm, I, so I'm anyhow, I've, but I got the old Testament mapped out. No, you go through and read it. And I wanted something that, that, Adult Bible students could breeze through quickly to get the gist of and really put it in, in a chronological order and, and, you know, know the highlights and the importance, but that young English readers, whether they're ESL students from other countries or they're American children learning to read, would be able to read and, and, you know, learn from. And my goal with this is I eventually want to have seven or six, probably six, mini stories under each one of these. And the more you read, the more advanced the English language gets. That's that's actually what I'm going for. So it'll be divided up into these groups. That's 52bible.com. And that's what I've been playing with this week. There. That's what I've done. So what am I going to talk to you about? I, I'm half inclined to go off on a rant about homosexuality because people are talking about it. Um... So, I don't know. I mean, I don't, you don't have a better idea, do you? What do I? What does Jesse Steele think about homosexuality? Well, it's not going to be normal. I'll tell you that. And it's going to be that typical, Jesse's the only person who's right and everyone else is wrong. I, you know, I, <laughs> you know that I don't think that, but you know, th- think about it for a second. Anyone who has a book is promoting themselves. And if you don't promote yourself, then you don't really have a book. I mean, uh, writers are right by definition. In At least it, it, it's their ongoing state of being. And even if a writer is, is truly a humble, caring, others-focused person, in the public, they have to be me, me-focused. Or people don't want to listen to them. Pe- I mean, you know, the, the writer, the speaker, the expert... The guy, the guru, the pundit, he comes in, he's talking, and people want to hear what he has to say. And he has to act like people want to hear what he has to say. He has to act like he wants to hear what he has to say, even if he doesn't. So, you know, that that, that Sunday morning pious pastor fake humility stuff doesn't get along with that well. I remember my dear aunt. I loved her dearly, but she hated the Rush Limbaugh TV show. Why is he at the bottom of this corner of the screen looking up at the guy making fun of him? I don't need that. But, and, it's, auntie, it's funny. You never see that on TV. But I don't need that. I think she struggled with uh, a little bit of uh, f- fake uh, humility inside. And, and Limbaugh, with his fake personality pride, um, sort of... Uh, Offended that. Um, homosexuality. What do I think of it in four minutes? I don't think it's. Uh, I don't. I don't believe in it. That that's a gist. Milo Yiannopoulos says there's no such thing as a lesbian. But then he then he turns around and he says, which is in itself is not a contradiction. I'm trying to put what he says. He says, well, men 
have been actively homosexuals for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, it goes back to Sodom and Gomorrah, the tribe of Benjamin. I mean, there actually were two times in the Bible that a seemingly pure Sodomite city was burned. One was Sodom and Gomorrah. God burned it. But then there was, uh, was it Gibeah, George? Was it? That's right. 52bible.com isn't finished, so you don't know how to go check and fact check that. Well, I'll keep thinking. I'll keep working on that. But it, it was really, the, the chapter numbers are similar from, 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 um, from Judges in Genesis. The chapter numbers are the same, kind of. It's really, really interesting, the parallels. Um, not identical, but similar. Um, you know, a, a foreigner, uh, a guy's house, uh, you know, it, it really, 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 really. And it's, it's, it's very difficult uh, to look in the rest of the Bible to, to say that those two, that, you know, that, that Sodom and Gomorrah being judged wasn't connected to sodomy. I mean, it, it was named after it. Um, but I'm not, you know, now that, that's the question about, you know, yes, it's been going on for a long, long, long time. Why were the Sunday morning Bible preachers with the, the Sodom and Gomorrah story in their Bibles under their arms shocked? I, Milo's right about that much anyway. It has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. And, and the church's big mistake, the Sunday morning church anyway, was being shocked about it. Acting shocked about something that's old news doesn't help stop it. Thank you. You're welcome. So on the one hand, yes, um, the Bible does clearly judge it, but I'm told not to. I don't judge homosexuals. I don't sit there, oh, you evil, oh, jack you. I don't think that. I, I read the Bible objectively and I see that God says he will. But he also says that I'm not supposed to judge anything. I No, I don't read the Bible just to put my own ideas into it. So, there's a lot that goes unreported. I, frankly, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in homosexuality as a state of being. I don't believe that there's homosexuals and heterosexuals. We're all created as heterosexuals. You cannot, on your own, without scientific alteration, which will make you susceptible to all kinds of diseases like a GMO crop, you cannot reproduce biologically without it being heterosexual. So I don't believe in homosexuality as an identity. I think a lot of people are either introspective or not. And they see their own thoughts and feelings or not. And of, we'll, we'll go, I'll speak about men here, of the young men who see these feelings in themselves, which other men have, but don't see many of them sexualize them. Well, I don't young men think about a strong man's body and they think about man parts, just like to think about car parts. And some men think, Oh, it means sexualness. And other men are smart enough to say, no, it means that I'm a human being. So I take my a step further. Yeah. It's been going on. Yes. God will judge it. No, I'm not to judge it. But I don't think it's a state of being. I think we all are who we are. And someone who thinks that he is something that he's not just doesn't understand himself. But we don't need to hate him. We don't, we don't, I don't need to hate him. What, what's, with, what's with the hate? Why? How many homosexual friends I've had tell me, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Come on, grow up. Show me that, show me that you're right. You know, I should get to the point. The amount of hard work needed to survive is unfair. But so are the payoffs. Every victor, every winner, every success story did an unfair amount of hard, smart work. Too much, in fact. That's why they make victory look so easy. Don't be distracted by fairness. Nothing is fair, even your strengths. Everyone has an unfair advantage and an unfair disadvantage. Oftentimes, they are the same. What makes it fair is hard work and self-honesty about why hard work fails. Keep going. Once you've done more work than you need, you'll be rewarded more than you deserve. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.